to me patiently for about five minutes. The president of that court, who is also the president of this court, <coughs> remarked to me, Mr. Birchman, what do you understand by middle of the road? In retrospect, I realized that he was trying to suggest that I was wasting his time. <laughs> but I was not about to be put off so easily. And so I proceeded to explain to him, of course, middle of the road means center of the road, equidistant from either side. His honor paused again, waiting for me to stop. When I, of course, would not take the hint kindly, he proceeded to inform me in a very gentle and firm manner that I was being a bit of an idiot. <laughs> These days, I'm making that mistake a lot less. And unfortunately, I've never made that mistake before, Madam Justice Bernard, although I suspect the result may have been similar. I've listened to the recollections of the years of distinguished service, not only to the judiciary, but also to the Caribbean community and, of course, internationally. Justice Bernard's service, of course, extends to matters far outside the scope of legal or judicial things. And it struck me that I can hardly think of a current member of the bar who approaches his or her service to the community with such passion and dedication. And for this, I thank you very much, Madam Justice Bernard. You've been an example to us all, and I wish you the very best in your retirement. Uh, Your Honours, it would be remiss of me not to take advantage of this opportunity. Having listened to the list of distinguished children of Ghana who served the CCJ, not to mention or add to that list an adopted son of the soil who is present in the room, Mr. Sheldon MacDonald, who of course left Jamaica and served at the CARICOM Secretariat as head of the coordinating unit uh, for many years before the court's uh, inauguration was achieved. In fact, uh, as you may recall, those were the dark days in the Bank of Ghana, not in a building as opulent as the one to our east. Mr. MacDonald continues to serve Ghana as the head of the University of Ghana. And I suspect, upon reading Your Honor's decision in the Shanik Mairi case, We'll never see the back of him. <laughs> I thank you. I now call upon Ms. Simone Morris Ramlal, President of the Guyana Association of Women Lawyers. May it please your honors, all protocols observed. Honorable President and Judges of the Caribbean Court of Justice, I stand here privileged and humbled to speak on behalf of an association that I know is near and dear to the heart of our distinguished honoree today. 27 years ago, Justice Bernard, then judge of the High Court of Guyana, marshaled the zeal of other like-minded women lawyers, such as Justice Claudette Le Bennett, the late Pearlene Roach, L.V. Edwards, Sheila Chapman, and the former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Deborah Barker. The result was that in April 1987, the Guyana Association of Women Lawyers was born. It was a first for the Caribbean, and I verily believe that the Guyana Association of Women Lawyers continues to be the only association of women lawyers in the CARICOM region. Justice Bernard set very high standards for the association as she sought to empower women in particular with knowledge of their legal rights. The Guyana Association of Women Lawyers has as its motto, women promoting justice and equality. This epitomizes the vision that Justice Bernard had
for the voluntary service she expected the women lawyers to give. Justice Bernard nurtured the association in those early years, being its first president. She also continued to display an abiding interest in the work of the association, even after ascension to judicial office, and even while not within the shores of Guyana. This, inter this interest manifested itself when she spared no effort to attend our 15th and 25th anniversary celebrations with a view to re-anchoring the women lawyers as regards the mission of the association. Long before institutional capacity building and creating synergies became politically correct buzzwords, Justice Bernard recognized the need to encourage young women lawyers to participate in the association and to take up the mantle of leadership within the association and the profession. She led by example and has always exerted us to be committed to excellence. Justice Bernard is the epitome of decorum and poise and an individual who abhors inappropriate conduct or dress at the bar. I am advised and verily believe that on arriving into the high court compound, especially when she was Chief Justice, she somehow managed to do a panoramic sweep of the corridors from the courtyard. On arriving at the top of the stairway, having ascended in her deliberate and regal manner, handbag elegantly held on her left arm, with a crook of her right index finger, she would summon errant counsel. Do you think you are appropriately dressed? A look of confusion in counsel would ensue. To the male lawyers, that tie. To the women lawyers, your neckline. Nothing below the collarbone is to be exposed. <laughs> and for that matter, nothing above the knee either. And to all, your conduct must be exemplary. I gather that such an exhortation stemmed not only from her upbringing at home, but from the teachings of her alma mater, the Bishop's High School. Inappropriate conduct, I'm advised, would often result in the look and calm words of censure. I have been requested by Madam Justice of Appeal, Yonet Cummins, and Justice Roxanne George to say to you, Justice Bernard, that while they have, with some limited success, managed to emulate the look, they have not been so successful at utilizing the crook of the index finger <laughs> with the same panache. <laughs> Justice Bernard has never been selfish with her knowledge and experiences, sharing them with legal and non-legal persons alike. We know that she is a most sought after guest speaker. While Justice Bernard was never one to gallery, so to speak, she, she has always been firm in her commitment to championing the cause of women with quiet and erudite activism. Many of her speeches have as their theme judicial activism in the implementation and enforcement of human rights. In this regard, her commitment to the human right of women to be free from all forms of violence is legendary. On Friday the 6th of February 1976, while a practicing attorney at law, Justice Bernard demonstrated her commitment to equal rights and justice for women when she led a delegation of women 
which included then First Lady, Mistress Viola Burnham, and Justice Le Bennett, then a barrister, to the Court of Appeal, where they sat quietly in their trouser suits at the sitting of the court. The aim was to send a message to the male judicial officers that women lawyers wearing pants was not going to lead to the demise of the legal profession in Guyana. This led ultimately to Chancellor Haynes issuing a practice direction on mode of dress for lawyers, which is still in effect, and which provides for women to wear pants suits. I'm wearing mine today. Thank you, Justice Bernard. The Guyana Legal Aid Clinic also owes its existence to Justice Bernard, who was involved in the formation of its predecessor, the Georgetown Legal Aid Clinic. She was chairperson of the board for several years. And the clinic serves that vulnerable group of society of which women represent a large proportion. Justice Bernard's lasting legacy will be the many people she has not only touched, but empowered. She has consistently mentored young women lawyers. While to date, no woman lawyer has been accorded the accolade of Silk in Guiana, we have, as her mentees, many women lawyers in senior legal positions, including judicial officers here in Guyana and throughout the Caribbean. Justice Bernard, who is a woman of dignity and integrity, is also humble, approachable, and very engaging. She readily interacts with all and is a source of inspiration. New attorneys were delighted at GAWL's 25th anniversary celebrations when she went to each table to chat with them. Justice Desri Patricia Bernard, CCH, ORCCH, a trailblazer for women lawyers and women generally, the Guyana Association of Women Lawyers salutes you. Judge, as you are fondly called by us, we wish you long life and continued good health. For while you may be retiring from judicial office, we know you will not be retiring from public service. We look forward to your continued interaction with us for many years to come. I thank the Honorable President and judges of the Caribbean Court of Justice for affording the Guyana Association of Women Lawyers this opportunity in Justice Bernard's home country to pay tribute to her. Very best wishes to you, Justice Bernard. I thank you. We will now have a video presentation of the speech by Ms. Tracy Robinson of the Caribbean Association of Judicial Officers. For me to begin uh, my discussion and a conference in which we are thinking in some regards about gender than to pay respect to you, this pioneer woman judge in the Caribbean, former Chief Justice and Chancellor of Ghana, an activist lawyer who helped to found the Guyana Women's Lawyers Association, a member chair and rapporteur of the CEDAW committee where she detailed legal and policy recommendations to states, parties, uh, one in respect of one of the most ratified human rights conventions. She was a member of the committee that issued the groundbreaking recommendation 19 on violence against women that gender-based violence is a form of discrimination that seriously inhibits women's ability to enjoy rights and freedoms on a basis of equality with men and women, and a form of discrimination within the meaning of CEDAW, the Women's Convention. The Honorable Madame Justice Desiree Bernard is a generous and plain-speaking woman, deeply committed to nation and region, and yet an avowed internationalist and a long-time defender of women's rights. She's been honored by her country, by the University of the West Indies. She's the recipient 
of the CARICOM Triennial Award for Women in 2005. She's a judge of the Inter-American Development Bank Administrative Tribunal, not to be outdone by CARICOM, Guyana, and others. One of those bigging up Madame Justice Bernard this year is a blog called GuyaneseGirlsRock.com. <laughs> I wish in this moment to salute you, Justice Bernard, and to express our admiration, our regard, and our gratitude to you for your service. Thank you. I now call upon Madam Justice Bernard to express your sentiments and give your reply. Well, Mr. President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Sir Dennis Byron. Mr. Justice Carl Singh, Honorable Attorney General, His Excellency Mr. LaRock, Honorable Mr. Justice Stanley Moore, Mr. Oswald Barnes, Professor Lutchman, Mr. Ronald Bert Smith, Ms. Simone Morris, Ramlal. It is indeed I have to say, on an occasion such as this, words are usually an inadequate medium to express one's gratitude for the kind sentiments expressed and encomiums showered by friends and well-wishers on someone who strives ever so humbly to fulfill the obligations and duties of the office of judge at all levels in the hierarchy of our courts and our judicial system. Although inadequate, I wish to place on record my heartfelt thanks to all present, and particularly to the president, judges and staff of the Caribbean Court of Justice, as well as the honorable chancellor and his staff for arranging this court sitting and other activities in my honor, and not excluding the Secretary General of CARICOM and all other well wishes. This is indeed a historic sitting, being the first time that the full benches of Guyana's highest court, its Court of Appeal and High Court have met, as well as representatives of the magisterial bench and of the legal profession in Guyana. Also present is the Chief Justice of Belize and representatives of the legal profession of Trinidad and Tobago. When I make special mention, when I mention this, of my daughter and her fiance. And in this, I should include Gail Dale Kingston, who though Guyanese, is practicing in Trinidad and Tobago. So, and Dale, of course, was my legal assistant when I served as chancellor, so I think that she had an obligation to be here. <laughs> so welcome to all of you. Upon my assumption of office as a judge in the Supreme Court of Guyana on the 1st of October, 1980, I pledged to hold the scales and to, to be patient scales of justice, and to be patient with the poor and unlearned who may appear before me. Whether I fulfill that pledge will be the judgment call of those who entrusted their cases to me for resolution. I hope that I can be accorded a passing grade. However, this morning's court sitting, although assembled to pay tribute to me for my years of judicial service, also provides the opportunity for me to comment on the justice which we seek to provide for the public and which we all as judges pledge to do on the assumption of office. 
On another occasion in May 2001, at the special sitting of the full court of the Guyana Supreme Court, to welcome both the Acting Chancellor, Honorable Mr. Justice Carl Singh, as Chief Justice, and me as Chancellor. In my response to the kind sentiments expressed, I commented on the continuing increase in litigation and the decrease in completion of cases due in no small measure to the paucity of judges allocated to reduce that increase. I commend the Chancellor Singh for his valiant efforts at reducing the perpetual backlog of cases and performing miracles with a limited number of judges at his disposal. The complement has not been increased over several years. I hazard a guess that this has remained the same due to the inability to attract members of the profession to the judicial bench. It is never easy to persuade lawyers to trade their lucrative practice, even for prestigious judicial office with reduced emoluments. But ways have to be found to relieve the pressure on the small coterie of judges if the administration of justice is to achieve its objective in Guyana. And I strongly urge, with the presence of the Honorable Attorney General, that this request be given effect to. It has been lingering for over 10, 12 years. There is need to increase the coterie of judges so that the courts can perform their primary function. Now about my tenure as a judge of the Caribbean Court of Justice, which was the crowning glory of my judicial career, and which I never expected to attain even in my wildest dreams. It has been, however, very rewarding, mainly due to the camaraderie which exists among the judges, particularly the wit, pun deliberately intended, in reference to my brother of the same nomenclature, and the respect displayed for each other's opinions, even when disagreements as the content of a judgment arise. We take seriously the heavy responsibility of being the court of last resort for the countries accepting our jurisdiction, and spare no effort in ensuring that the judgments of the court can withstand the international scrutiny. Over the nearly nine years of the court's existence, I posit the view, in which I am sure my fellow brothers concur, that we have earned the respect of other international courts and the majority of the people of the Caribbean region as we strive to fulfill the vision of the court, which is, and I quote, to provide for the Caribbean community an accessible, fair, efficient, innovative, and impartial justice system built on a jurisprudence reflective of our history, values, and traditions while maintaining an inspirational, independent institution worthy of emulation by the courts of the region and the trust and confidence of its people. Of course, the journey to establishing a jurisprudence which is peculiarly regional will be long and arduous, with several bumps along the way. The chief being about our ability the skepticism about our ability and competence to dispense justice at as high a standard as those from the former mother country. It matters not that these judges from foreign countries never heard or understood the meaning of a chattel house in Barbados or St. Lucia, a box hand in Guyana, or Susu in Trinidad and Tobago or never heard a phrase which is peculiarly Guyanese, your eyes pass me. <laughs> I will not even attempt to define what this means. It defies explanation, but we know it when we hear it. I can attest to the fact that the education of my brothers Witt and Hayden has been enriched 
and the peculiarities of the West Indian dialects now pose them no problem. As I leave the court, I wish to give the assurance that the region, to the region, that the Caribbean Court of Justice is in safe and competent hands as it continues its voyage to the ports of the Caribbean, encountering passengers willing to be a part of a destination towards the elusive dream of establishing a jurisprudence peculiarly our own. Individually, I wish to thank, I know that Stanley Moore has regaled you with some ex experiences that he's had with my notes, which sometimes I, I don't adequately recall. But it just shows the length of time that we knew each other. And I'm glad if at that stage you consider that I did do you a service by giving you my notes. To all of those of you who made contributions to the success of this program, I am deeply indebted. And particularly to the president of the court, whose friendship I've known for since we were both young persons, and whom we continued to know each other well throughout the years. And I express deep gratitude to him for organizing this occasion. And I thank you and all of you here present for the good wishes expressed and sentiments which you contributed to make this day a memorable one. May God continue to bless us all. Thank you. This, ladies and gentlemen, brings an end to this special sitting. Before we, the ceremony is closed, uh, I regret that um, we omitted to say that another Guyanese um, um, son of the soil who serves the CCJ um, as a member of the trust fund is actually sitting in court. Uh, Mr. Harriman Pamasa, I apologize for not mentioning you before. Now, Justice Bernard introduced the concept of wit. And on that note, I would like to in invite you to sing led by Justice Witt, for she's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> special sitting session. Happily, I would not have to call this court to rise as there are three other sessions, so please remain seated. The first other session is a full bench photograph. The second will be a presentation by the Attorney General, the Honorable Attorney General to the President of the Court of the Law Books. And the third session contains refreshment provided by the perfect host, the Supreme Court of Guyana, in the foyer. So after the judges have exited the court, you are all invited to attend a party.
do take my my camera. I got it. <laughs> Honorable Attorney General, would you please come forward? May I have your attention, ladies and gentlemen? The Honorable Attorney General has just presented to the President of the Caribbean Court of Justice the laws of the Republic of Cooperative Republic of Guyana and the law reports of Guyana also. On behalf of the Caribbean Code of Justice, I would like to express uh, thanks to the Honorable Attorney General on behalf of the Republic of Guyana for the donation of the new revised version of the laws of Guyana and the uh, compilation of law reports of Guyana. Um, Honorable AG, um, Justice Bernard was just reminded us that uh, on a previous occasion, um, she had donated her personal collection of the pre-revised version of the laws to the court. But now I, th I was trying to um, find out if it was true to say, and, and as far as we know, that this is the first time a state has made a donation of this sort to the court, and we express appreciation to you for it. All rise.